Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show special Patreon edition. I think this is the first time we've done this, actually. And if you're an audio, it maybe sounds a little different. And your video, it definitely looks a lot different because I'm not in the studio. Why am I not in the studio? Because the evening that we picked to, sh- to record this is so bad with snow. I can't get three blocks to the studio right now. It's ridiculous. So when you hear this, remember two weeks ago, Pittsburgh, when you couldn't go anywhere and all the tunnels were shut down? We're in a time warp right now. <laughs> but that's I, I and I felt weird canceling this considering I'm the only one who couldn't leave. <laughs> and and it didn't matter anyways. So we are doing this. We have some Patreons on the line with us. First of all, with his cat is Dave Potter. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lord. I I, he, I I love just in time to mount your shoulder to oh, yeah. show off in on the show. Of course, hey, of course. that's that that's a cat butt. That is, that is a cat, cat butt. butt. And there he is, oh, one no. of our managers, Bradley. <laughs> that was the time on the Wrestling Mayhem show when we danced. <laughs> 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 he dressed up for this one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really. I've never seen. I've never seen. Uh, uh, what were we calling it before? Uh, Sprockets Bradley. <laughs> um, before this, I, I like 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 Dave's going like full on Christmas, and you're going full on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> a- Apple uh, iPhone. I was going. Full, I was going to say I'm full that on German dialect. Farnsworth made the Sprockets yeah. joke. But then uh, I was like, "Look, I look like I could present a phone to somebody." <laughs> well, tell me, tell me, tell us, uh, uh, tell us all the new features of the Bradley phone, <laughs> or the B phone, if you will. It has no butts. That's it. That's all, that's all it <laughs> the it icon... butts. If there's a picture on their phone of a butt, it just has a big uh, circle around with a slash through it. You know, that's a, that's the, all the phone does. The fruit on the other side of it is just the peach. <laughs> that's it that's it that's it also with us from a place where they don't get snow <laughs> <laughs> we get snow just not all how, the many, time. how many years did you say it's been since you've had snow out there out west <laughs> about a year and a half two years <laughs> two years hasn't seen a flake in two years <laughs> Uh, Tina Key is joining us. Thank you for hopping in. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. You, you, she got, you got in just under the wire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for, the, for the invite, Sorg. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. She's like, oh, I just left Patreon. I'm like, you've been here all year. You're you're in. Get in. Here. Come on. Get in here. And of course, other manager. He's been man. You have been manager for a while. Farnsworth Investments. Himself, Mr. Farnsworth Investments. Is that, yeah, that's your new name now. Yeah, Mr. Farnsworth. And actually, it's Dr. Farnsworth Investments. I didn't go to, to investment medical school for eight years to just be called Mr. Thank you. Oh, so you can, yeah, so you can you really uh, medical those investments. What? That's not how. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, we're co managers. So it worked out with Raw when you had like, what was it, uh, Eric Bischoff and Ric Flair or something like that? Uh, Eric Bischoff and Stone Cold. Which of which of you is Bischoff and which one's Stone Cold? Oh gosh, <laughs> I, um, I don't know which one of us is Stone Cold to begin with. <laughs> I'm I'm clearly Bischoff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I mean I've worked with Joe Dombrowski, so has mm-hmm. Eric Bischoff. Therefore, there well there you go. That's right. So 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 
not the only so this this came up in cover i don't even know like like an off like one of our chats or something like farnsworth obviously you've worked in wrestling for several several years but i don't know if we've mentioned this a lot on the show tina you worked with some professional wrestling in a in a fashion in cincinnati correct that is correct um for my internship for the short brief time when I was in broadcasting school, I ran audio for Heartland Wrestling Association. So I was kind of like, oh. yeah, I was kind of like there for the infinite um, infancy, I don't want to say, or like the beginnings of John Moxley, which was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, which that co comes back around in an interesting way since we've been working mm -hmm. with Joe Dabrowski as he's been resurfacing a lot of those Heartland Wrestling tapes. For mm -hmm. special releases, <laughs> so yeah, so. it was it was pretty cool for like I said, um, John Moxley. I want to say, oh gosh, um, Eli Drake was there during those mm. beginnings too. Um, sometimes Shark Boy would come in, Nigel obviously too. Um, it was it was actually this was like mm. two thousand five, so there was pretty uh, there was a pretty interesting crew. I want to say even some of the beginnings of Sammy Callahan too, if I remember correctly. And they were doing uh, local TV at the time, right? That's why you got got in on the broadcasting side. Mm -hmm. Correct. So this is like a precursor to the full sale NXT deal. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's amazing. That's awesome. So uh, that, that was cool. Fact. That was cool thing. Oh, go ahead, Bradley. Uh, Tina, did uh, I think one of the final champions or was there was uh, Chance Prophet? Uh, did you have, did was he there by the time uh, or did he leave or uh, excuse me? Did you? I, leave I left before, before that happened. I believe so. That's when they were kind of like doing more of their shows. I want to say more, more or less so. Um, more towards the Dayton area than the Cincinnati area. I think I was out here in Washington by that time that happened. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I turned my clock off. I knew it was, it was <laughs> billing off there. But the... <laughs> That's fine. I'm mobile. So I can show you. Like, see my pretty clock there? See that there? Like, oh. <laughs> the audio. The audio will um, appreciate that as well. So. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> So, anyways, yeah, I say it was kind of a loose episode here, but uh, um, I thought I generally kind of, you know, a lot of you guys, you know, well, Farnsworth, you're in there too from time to time, or in the chat room, of course, contributing uh, week to week on the show. But uh, uh, kind of, how has 2020 uh, 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 treated you wrestling wise? I guess I could say I'm trying to. Wait, I won't. I don't want to get into all the other stuff. I just want to talk about wrestling on this one as much as possible. As well, much as senior possible. Senior manager first. What's that? You talk to the senior manager first. You didn't get talk to me first. Fine. Go ahead, Farmsworth. <laughs> well, if there's one thing I learned about wrestling in 2020, it's just how petty Heel Bradley is. Ah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, honestly, I don't know. I've, I haven't been to a... I haven't been to a show since February. Wow. I think uh, it, I forget if it was IWC or WrestleRex that was my last show. They were <laughs> both like relatively near each other on that one. And I haven't been back. And I mean, I'll, I don't know. Uh, I, I keep seeing pictures of a bunch of people who are, you know, all taking a picture together and half of them wear masks. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready to come back. So. It it, it has been really inter real interesting. So it, you know, it, you know, I've been to, of course, to a handful of shows, and I'm very, very picky about what we do. Um, but it, this this thing has been happening where, like, I'm watching wrestlers actually work out in the ring with their masks on. Like it's like it it's, and at least like the shows where they have like bigger people coming in, like people are pretty compliant with it. It seems I, I'm really surprised. I I recall green. I think green am. Said he won the uh, Young Lions Cup in Shikara while wrestling a 30 minute match wearing a mask over his face. If he mm -hmm. can do it, so can you. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, they're, I mean, obviously, they're not, I and mean, the referees are and stuff, but, um, you know, I, it's, I, it, it, it's not like the indie companies are doing all the testing and everything and protocols that an AEW is, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, got to try to do somehow, I guess, at this point. Yeah. I mean, I don't fault anyone for running a show or no. getting on a show. 
it is more my personal I I the way I've been phrasing it and I'm using a line from Tan, Tad Daniels the comedian I don't want to be the guy that kills someone's man yeah so, no absolutely I, I if like I I believe people are being safe I don't judge anyone who wants to work on a show go to a show I have a little bit of judgment for the 30 people that all get together and take a picture together because I know <laughs> that's not your I know that's not your quarantine pod. yeah but, yeah it's a hell of a quarantine pod if it is right yeah that you were able to get all of you to go to the same show mm -hmm. wow. like we all organized this thing just so we could go to this show that we hoped was still going to happen in a couple months and take um, a picture together with our masks off yes uh no absolutely so uh, but what about like you know it, it's been an interesting year as wrestling kind of rediscovered how to present itself uh as well you know the television product between what wwe and AEW have been doing um seeing these other promotions i can't believe i watched an entire night of three shows uh recently across three different promotions across two different countries <laughs> um uh, that uh, that that all had no fans and it's still here in December. Uh, you know, uh, how how are you how are you guys generally kind of feeling about how how that's kind of developed as we're in December? You know, are you are you kind of gravitating towards the uh, uh, light fan fake fans uh, versus the at the arenas, or, or are we just used to it by now? To be honest, I'm kind of used to it by now, mm. and it it just. It seems, and this is just my perspective, but it just seems weird to look at older shows where you see packed arenas. Yes. Because, yeah. I mean, you hate to say it, but we've been distancing, for lack of a better term, for since March, at least in the U.S. Yeah. You know, yeah. where we are, at least we're in Pennsylvania, has been doing it since March. So I've been working from home since March. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, and you look at older stuff, you're like, or even stuff from um, the Rumble from this year. And you're like, yeah, they had, what was it? 50,000 fans in that baseball arena, 40, 50,000 fans or something like that. And it's like, I can't, it we're going to get back there eventually, but to have that many fans, it's going to take. Maybe we'll adjust quickly. People tend to adjust quickly, but it's going to take a while to get that mentally back where I can say I'm going to sit next to the shoulder to shoulder scrammed in next to this person who I have no idea who they are. That, or what country they came from. Right. Right. <laughs> or, or, you know, you know, they're, they may be coughing. Is that allergy? Is it something else? I know how comfortable am I going to be to do that? How long is it going to take me to do that? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, that's why the Thunderdome recently moved from where it was to where it is now. So they could use the arena for NBA basketball. So, you know, they're, they're, I figure they're going to eventually start bringing people, uh, probably pot it off and, you know, not crammed in again. Mm -hmm. But that's going to start coming up soon again. And how weird is that going to look? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it it it, it kind of used to it dying out because it's been so long. And the Thunderdome video wall, I think WWE is uh, admittedly, it's annoying how much they're patting themselves on the back by saying how great it is. We threw a lot of money at this problem, and look at this. Yes. So, and they've been, and, and I gotta say, they've been. Um, I like it. I, don't get me wrong. I, I, like, I like it. it. It's a nice solution. Yeah. Um. And but it's also kind of faded in the background too, right? Yeah. Like I don't think it's it's um. It's not as special as it was like three months ago, right? Uh, uh, uh I'm more interested in seeing what they do at the uh, Capital Wrestling Center now, like the whole fan video wall mix thing. Uh, it's a it's a cool atmosphere that they've done there. I feel mm -hmm. so, but uh, uh, Bradley, I know you've been you know you've been you we 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 talk like, we talk about this a lot on, on Messenger, of course, Bradley. Uh, but uh, you know between that and 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 uh, you know how are you adjusting and kind of watching the wrestling and uh, and seeing how things have developed throughout the year? 
Well, uh, first off, WWE, I'd say as the year went along, I oh, hold on, one second, one second. I want to point out that he moved his camera to be more festive and put the camera tree in the yes, shot. Yes, did. So, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so, Santa hat. See, there you go. There you go. Um, wait a minute. Let me pump position. Okay. Um, no, over the year, uh, I stopped watching WWE. I, mm -hmm. I was getting turned off by, um, I felt like they were getting a little too dangerous. I think, uh, Black Wednesday really turned me off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I ended up uh, right now. I just watched the pay-per-views and that's, and that's it. You know, I've got the network there. I don't feel like I'm going to unsubscribe to that. If I do that, then I can't do my uh, Jacob Edwin homework. So I need it for that. You do. You do. I it it, it keeps you on there. Here, here's so, a. You know, go ahead. Finish. I, I'll, I'll save my question for later. Okay. Um, I've gotten. I think I've gotten a bit more love for AEW as it goes along. Mm -hmm. That I, you know, I watched tonight. That was a nice little. Uh, it was a bit of a squash, but it was good at main event, and then it had some good matches. Um, uh, for so for a time, that, I don't watch the pay per views because they cost right. fifty bucks, and uh, this accountant doesn't feel like shelling out fifty bucks for a pay per view. <laughs> for for timing, uh, uh, as of this recording, we just watched the night where uh, Kenny Omega and Joey Janela were the main event on AEW. Um, so, uh, who knows what happens by the time you see this? But <laughs> right. um, now, as as far as independents go. Um, of course, you know, I'm, it, I'm going to one event a month, if that, and mm -hmm. once everything got inside, I, I wouldn't go any longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got some hot takes and some not so hot takes on it. Um, I guess, you know, there's might be people that know better than me, but I don't understand it. I don't understand why we're going inside. We're having events. Uh, one had 200 people, one had 100 people, and at least 100 people is better than 200, but still kind of like, you're all still inside a building, you're all screaming your heads off. Yeah. Uh, maybe a few of them have masks, but, you know, to say bad things about my own kind, how much would you trust the average professional wrestling fan <laughs> to keep their mask on? Absolutely. So... I don't understand it, but I've talked with friends about it, and I know I've talked with some wrestlers about their passion to do what they worked and sacrificed so much to do. So I've worked. I've talked to some wrestlers that said, you know, I've done too much, and I want I want to try to do this and do it as safe as possible. And Sorg, I th I'm sure you know a couple of uh, promoters and wrestlers that have just said, I can't do it right now. Yeah. We can't yeah. do this thing. And there's some very good wrestlers that are staying home. There's some very good promoters that are staying home. Yeah, there seems to be three levels. There's the, this is all BS. I'm going to do my thing and throw everything to the wind. There's the, um, no, it's not safe. We're going to sit back and do this. And there's like the, we have to figure out how can we do this? How can we do this yeah. the right way? Um, and the, and you're seeing, you know, different results from each of those, right? Um, I, I think I had a discussion uh, just today, with with uh, separate discussions about each of those people addressing each of those those varieties, so and, and that's consistent. So, uh, uh, Tina, well, I think there's, there's people that um, they feel an emptiness because they don't have that. I have an yeah. emptiness right now. Yes, that I I I haven't I haven't hugged anyone other than my father for about five months. Yep. You know, yep. versus going to an event and. You know, not getting hugs from Keith Hot. To be fair, that's the, that's I haven't the hugged color. anyone besides uh, Bradley's father in five months. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when you get on the Mansion Letter on Patreon, you're also in a pod for COVID. So uh, oh, it works yeah. out well. That's one of the fringe benefits you heard here first. Yeah. Uh, but, Tina, so, but where I was going with it was. Okay. I think, you know, there's people that are just sit there and say, I need this. You know, I, I've got, yeah, yeah. I have friends that'll say, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got to go to yeah. this and I, I might get a little heat, but I'll, I've got a couple of friends. I'll just sit there and say, Hey, if I die, I die. Yeah. 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 And it's like, and gosh, everybody's coping with this in different ways. Uh, yeah. 
Tina, how, how I guess, Seattle? I don't think is running anything. You guys are pretty locked down out there. I think they're the entire pretty, West Coast. Yeah, we're pretty locked down, and unfortunately, it come it came at a time where like the scene was kind of like building back up mm -hmm. here um, with especially quite a few of the indie shows eyes on. I, I want to say bigger indie promotions had their eye on here. We just had New Japan here actually last summer. Um, so it, it came at a, unfortunately at a, I don't want to say bad or crucial time, but it was like in a scene where like the Washington, Oregon, and even uh, British Columbia area was kind of like building its way back up, which was kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are you, how are you dealing with the TV product at this point? Has it, has it gotten you back into it enough? Um, I mean, it is okay in a sense. I mean, I know I can keep my attention sometimes. Well, Kind of, sort of. <laughs> I, I'm used to the double, triple screen anyway. If Raw doesn't interest me, there's other things I can watch. Like today, mm -hmm. I was kind of like triple screening it between NXT, the finale of The Masked Singer, and AEW. Ah, <laughs> uh, the triple threat. You're like me on Saturday when I was had, what was that, AAA, uh, New Japan, and Impact at the same time. That, that was me too. That was that was wild. But it's, but it's wild that that's, that's something we can do now. So... Um, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely helped you expand, especially like, like the people that could still do things. Um, like I, I, if we didn't have this situation, I don't know if I would be doing honor club and impact plus experiments that I am right now. Right. Like right. If we would be doing the normal thing, expecting the same pay-per-views and going to the same indie shows. And that would be filling all of our time. Mm -hmm. At least so, on my end, Bradley. I think I think you're in, Bradley and Farnsworth. You're probably on the similar similar vein of that, right? F Farnsworth had a finger up, like he had a point. So like, I, I want Farnsworth to say what he was wanting to say there. Oh, just uh, well, you mentioned the AAA. Did anyone else watch AAA? Yeah. So it was like on the side amongst everything else, but yes. Did anyone see the 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 Marvel match? Yes, we we, talk, we, we <laughs> talked about having, that. I've been having this discussion with uh, with Troy Lord about how I don't think they really licensed it. Like Marvel's <laughs> announced it. I think it was probably more that AAA said, look, we have these people. What will it cost for us to have you just not sue us? Because it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Spider-Man. It was the spider. It wasn't Thanos. It was uh, the Purple Terror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that to me seems like they don't actually own the license. Well, and that's and that's uh, uh, how do I put traditional uh, down there? Uh, sure, because, uh, I mean, uh, but yeah, it, yeah. it was traditional in the sense that they would try and get away with it. Yeah, because uh, we've had an interview with uh, I was it Evangelistico was talking about how he would go down to Mexico, and they would dress people up as like the Super Mario Brothers and stuff, and have and Ninja Turtles and things. Yeah, the infamous Ninja Turtle Lucha match that that floats around YouTube, right? Um, yeah, and it feels just like that. It feels like they did this. Hey, it's like it's like that little bit of of plausible deniability that this kind of sorta is Venom, but maybe not really. But if they've already done that a hundred times, why do you need to license it with Marvel? Have you I seen the merchandise? The, the overly expensive merchandise that we found on, on our Monday night show. That's the reason. Well, that, that and it, it brings in it br well, it brings in uh families, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and my my son, he like absolutely geeked out on it. He mm -hmm. knows that it wasn't like official. But he he still loved it either way as as someone who is a huge fan of Marvel. I didn't think they'd have to be held to too many copyrights. I mean, this and this don't they have like mainstream songs? Didn't that one wrestler come out to Thriller by Michael Jackson stuff like that? So I didn't think they had many uh, copyrights they had to worry that about down in Mexico. Uh, you, yeah. you, lo you love that Japan has the music license, like the the consistent music license, you can't hear this music in America thing, but AAA is just like, ah. <laughs> What's Bon Jovi going to do? Sue us? <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. <laughs> Wagner. 
<laughs> it could be also, well, I mean, it's been a couple years, but just remember Marvel is, is Disney and Disney is everywhere. And Disney will sue anyone for any little, they, they have gone after, you know, Girl Scout troops. Wait, what? Really? Is it? Yes. However, yeah, because they use, they use Mickey Mouse. Disney, I can tell you they also have a very strict quality control yeah. about them. And mm. I'm surprised that, I guess that's my point. I'm surprised that they would have allowed what are knock clearly offs. not Disney, yeah. I guess, knockoff, for lack of a better term, yeah. version that they would license. As have a, like that that's the part that like the disney that i worked with never would have let uh uh terror terror purpana, purpana. didn't they go purpana. after a child care um, facility because they had disney characters painted mm-hmm. on the walls outside of it or yeah. something like that yeah, yeah. i think so 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 I, he, so here's the vibe i got off of that that the marvel thing are, are, are any of you did any of you see any of or are aware of the marvel live touring show that was going around a few years ago yep uh yeah. we actually we actually went to the first one uh i went to the one when i was here in town i think it was the first tour of it uh yeah. with uh, actually it was me and Yajagoff. it was it was great because it was just like us and a bunch of kids around us it was fantastic um but uh he was doing a bit and had an extra ticket so uh um but uh uh, yeah, like it's that like that typical like I guess Disney World when they have like those kind of stage stunt shows or something like it felt like that a little bit mm-hmm. except they had the best Spider-Man ever <laughs> like the only thing that you cannot dispute is like like oh my god this is the Spider-Man and it's the Spider-Man of like the origin story in 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 the wrestling match you know like f- it's like realized right now and all the rest i'm cool with the rest <laughs> the rest of the spider-man no 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 because no, they no, were no. all killed in the musical so they, oh, oh 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 that went soon. dark oh <laughs> jeez well, i was kind of shocked when you guys showed the clip on i think it was on mayhem mm-hmm. from trip from triple it was like I, I looked at it, it was like, wow, that really looks, the picture looks sharp and clear. I mean, it looked nice. It looked nicer than I thought it was going to. Have you never watched the AAA show? No. No. Oh, and, oh no, and the, great. And, and the giant Little Caesar pizza yes. ads everywhere. <laughs> they sponsored everything. I'm watching this thing. I got, I'm texting Matt Garland. I'm just like, yo, I, I could use some gum right now. Yo, I need, <laughs> I need some Little Caesars. Is mine open? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. And he's like, all the cameras are closed, dude. I'm like, oh yeah, but we got one. <laughs> yeah. But but, it, and it just, just how, like I said, it's like, wow, that looks really high end looking. Also the idea that there's little series of Caesars in Mexico just like broke me that I'm realizing it. That too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, there's little wow. Caesars in Mexico. <laughs> okay. Like I'm used to going to Canada and just seeing a McDonald's with a maple leaf on it, but you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, sorry. Uh, but yeah, no. That that and it looks like they did still set up in the middle of Arena Mexico, <laughs> in Mexico City, um, and they just went wild with cameras. But um, maybe the best. <laughs> hey, and I kept thinking this is cooler than WrestleMania was. Lake or that was early that, that was early on and they just didn't yeah. seem like they had any idea how to deal with no crowds no no uh, it, well, you, you have to admit they've gotten um, a lot better but early it, on it was rough i i think i think that if you look what happened in uh late march into april i think it was i think it tested a lot of those companies right like you know you saw you saw what you know WWE did going to the PC doing their thing, and then you saw what AEW did. Where like we're going to go to where they go to Atlanta and shot like as many mm-hmm. matches as they could. Yeah, before, like, before they were kicked out of the state. Yeah, yeah they were outside right? tonight. Oh yeah, they they've been. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the arena. That's their little uh, amphitheater attached to the football stadium. Yeah. And, and and they got locked into that place, which, you know, obviously the relationship with Tony Khan, and it just makes the show feel bigger. And then obviously, like, WWE's been trying to solve this equation for a while. Um, and it's it's just, uh, you know, hearing the story from, like, like Tony Khan and them talking about, like, them figuring out those, like, couple months is is pretty great. And I think it's going to be one of the big, um, just like you go to, like, uh, uh, how how Vince put together the first WrestleMania and how nutty of a time that was. I think that's AEW's first year story. Right. Um, I, no, go ahead. I would say the only difference being that Tony Khan already has a giant pile of money that <laughs> yeah. it, had it not yeah. gone right. He wouldn't have been bankrupt. So, that's true. But that's and, what it takes right now. What? And, good. Oops. good. Go ahead. Sorry, and in a fiscal like sense too, with them with Tony Khan being part owner, they have that they have those facilities to use for like bigger events with the Jaguar Stadium, with Stadium Stampede, and plus just having Daly's place attached to it. That's actually pretty. I guess I want to say pretty coincidental foresight on their part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're definitely lucked into having a, an outdoor amphitheater in a southern state where they didn't <laughs> have to worry about, you know. Oh, let's have an event, a match in, you know, let's say Vince had something in New York City or somehow it's like, yeah, you're pretty much screwed for five months, for four months out of the year for anything outdoor Mm -hmm. or you're taking a risk. Yeah. I'm curious because I know it has been getting kind of cold there in Jacksonville. In the 40s. (laughs) And it's in the 40s. Okay. You you see the steam. You see the steam. Yeah, I was going to say, it's all steam coming out to people tonight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, we did. We we were doing the stadium shows for Warrior Wrestling. Um, it was a week that it was Brian Pillman and Warhorse, I think, and I think we got down to like fifty, and mm-hmm. it was ridiculous watching the stuff coming off of them by the end of that match. So they still they put in like a full like I don't know fifteen twenty minute match too. You know, we, we were all uh, the two PW uh, October Halloween event. How cold was outside for that? I was in Chicago, but I understand it was pretty cold. Um, it would have been it, so, yeah. It was, it was probably it was probably in the fifties for those guys out yeah. there doing that. It looked like it. you could see a little little bit of steam coming out of people's breath and whatnot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's why there was a giant, giant, giant fire. <laughs> oh, so, um, yeah, no, but I mean, but that's the kind of thing that's been cool to kind of do those kinds of things, and 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 honestly, there's experiments like that that, um, you know, regardless of if we have full fan events in you know summer, I think some of those things are going to still happen, you know, uh, uh, you know, there may there may still be you know weird Halloween shows and fight underground in 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 warehouses and things like that because I mean it's kind of created its own thing now. Mm-hmm. So, you might as well go with it. I mean, go with it, especially if you can do outside more often. You can't go for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you're ready. I mean, you have something in place where it's like, hey, if things go weird again for who knows what reason, you know, wrestling will go on. Life will go on, just like Jurassic Park, uh, <laughs> which is kind of it, it, the resilience of professional wrestling. Because I think we were all sitting around in March saying, man, professional wrestling is dead for the foreseeable future. Like I, I, that was the conversation I feel that was happening back then. I don't know. I'll go back and listen to one of the episodes. I guess. Oh no, no. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and there was just so. And I don't think most people would have predicted. Oh, by the way, in December we're pretty much going to be business wise in the same boat, but overall probably worse yeah. than we thought. How bad it was back yeah. in April. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, but it's interesting. So. I, one thing I am kind of wondering with all the outdoor shows when it's getting colder is people, the chance of injuries. Just because once you're warmed up, it wouldn't be that bad. But, you know, you can try staying warm back in the locker room, making sure, you know, all the muscles stay loose. You go out there, you hit 40 degree weather, you hit, you know, Especially if a breeze starts going, yeah, or an outdoor, uh, and it's it's going to be hard to make sure nothing gets pulled. 
I know that was an issue in one of the shoots we did. I saw a guy like he was just get in and warm or not, but just did a, a hop over the ropes. And then like, he's like, well, my foot just went, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it, it like, you know, muscle kind of tightened up or spasm mm-hmm. or something and, and it got him pretty messed up. And, and, you know, thankfully it wasn't <laughs> when you don't have fans, you can say, Hey, we'll do your match later. If you get yourself worked out, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, um, so it's well, like okay. It's easy to ice it. I mean, there's a foot of snow all over the place outside, so you can just yeah. go outside and ice it pretty easy. There you go. Just roll around <laughs> yeah. in this. Roll around in this. You'll be just, just fine. So, yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing that would have been neat if, let's say, WWE, because they they are basically rolling in money still. You know, even though they let go all those people, they're still lo- rolling in money. Lego people have the worst ra- some of the worst ratings in their history and still mm-hmm. still doing no okay breaking quarters. Yeah, they're, yeah. Supposed they, to, they're supposed to have the most profitable year this year, even with yeah. everything that's gone on. It, make, it makes you think that the house shows were just losing money and they really shouldn't do them anymore. But yeah. what they could have literally done, because they could even have Thunderdome for a recorded show. Because mm-hmm. you're just watching TV. Uh I do believe that's a contractual issue. Oh, okay. Because they, 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 have they, to be live. they literally could have gotten everyone together for two weeks, recorded shows, and then had a either real or reality behind the scenes at the WWE quarantine house. <laughs> quarantine legends house. Is that what well, you want? Pretty much. They could have had it. You know, I mean, the, 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 like a 24-7, 24-7 quarantine thing. Well, similar, you know? similar to like reality-based um, Russell House over yeah. um, at Impact Wrestling. <laughs> I mean, you could, it could, like I said, it could have been reality mm-hmm. where, yeah. you know, all, oh no, we're going to, we have to get ready for a match. Oh, but there's, there's, are, are they really going to work together well for their match beforehand? <laughs> or, you know, the fact that someone's, you know, ate all the pudding in the refrigerator, pissed off their roommate, and now there's now there's friction behind the scenes. They could have made an over. entire behind the scenes whole thing about it. Somebody so, stole all of our tights, but there's clues on where they are. We have to yeah. follow the clues for the next hour. Oh, jeez. I mean, <laughs> USA's doing a good job. Good job with uh, Ms. and Mrs. Mm-hmm. You know, all the behind the scenes stuff, you know, like Miz trying to learn, uh, Miz getting talked into doing a kip up by uh, Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, that, that leads to another question. So, obviously, we've had, you know, we've, I, I feel like we've kind of gone out of it a little bit. Cinematic matches, we've had these new concepts like a uh, uh, mass wrestler pop up, we've had these other other indie cinematic matches like what MV Young's been doing with the uh, uh, Polycult and everything, those kinds of shows that he's been doing, uh, uh, technical advances with the Thunderdome, Wrestle House, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, whatever the hell that thing is that Gallows and Anderson does on pay-per-view with Chalk and Shop of Mania. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I, I know the guy that produces those and he's like, I, he's like, He's like, this is the stupidest thing I ever done, but it's so much fun watching everybody <laughs> react to it. Uh, but uh, you know, so what is like? I don't want to say the top innovation. Like, what is to you a favorite or most interesting development in professional wrestling? Through, you know, and I, I still call it the COVID era. I mean, that 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 that's what it is to me. Me, the best, I mean, if we're the best part so far to me has been how well WWE has hit the fact that they don't have a live audience, mm-hmm. specifically by using uh, the crowd sounds that they already had from various video games <laughs> to mask the sound. Because at its heart, wrestling is about the reaction you get from the live audience. Yeah. Yeah. And when you don't have that, it radically and completely changes the product. And I think they have done the best job of what I have watched of that, of figuring out a way to mask that hole that is clearly in the, in the pro wrestling world. 
I agree that they've been doing a very good job with it, but I'd also say they've actually been doing it longer than this COVID has been around. I remember watching an episode of SmackDown that was on Hulu, and like the the piped in noise cut out and then went back in during a match. And you're kind of like all of a sudden like, wait a minute, everyone was cheering for this guy, then they suddenly stopped, like almost like, let's go. The <laughs> and you hear, you hear scattering of like a little a couple of cheers. Let's go, you know. So they've been doing this longer than we realize. Hey, hey, well, even even some of those prime time wrestling things we've been watching because of uh, uh, Professor Edwin. Um, and by the way, this is a week after. I'm sure that thing between Mad Mike and Professor Edwin went absolutely fine and very peaceful. Anyways, other than that, uh, <laughs> but but I'm, I'm watching some of those, and I'm like, I'm watching these, and I'm like. This crowd doesn't sound right. Like this doesn't sound like the building that we're in. You know what I mean? You know, it's like they, they. I don't. I don't think. I don't think this is what this arena sounds like. It, it, no, 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 no. So you know, or, or a couple of years, loud cheers and everything, and everyone's just sitting there with a blank stare, sitting on their hands. Yeah. Um, here's here's a fun fact. I didn't know until like I don't know a couple of years ago when they started putting superstars and wrestling challenge on the network again. Um, I never knew that they were standing in front of a green screen in front of the crowd. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that the crowd wasn't actually there. All the years that I watched those as a kid, never knew. I I've, no I've gone to events before where what would happen is, I mean, Bobby Abrain Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon are not there, but uh, Gene would come out and say, now react how you would if you saw... Roddy Piper, when he was healed, boo, they hear this big boo. And he says, okay, now let's all chant Weasel. And everyone's chanting Weasel for, you know, because he's telling us to do And then they show the show, and then Bobby brings, like, looking back there at all, all the fans that are chanting Weasel at him and everything <laughs> like that. So it's wild. It's wild. Um, uh, it, it, mm. What, 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 uh, Tina, what's, uh, what's your big uh, innovation or, or, or what's got your attention this year? What caught my attention this year, I guess, just how they're doing this, um, they're able to, I want to try to like, say, try to make new stars, or at least um, take eyes off of like, who would be the mainstream ones. Mm -hmm. um, AEW also fairly new, like, they've been they did that made a star out of how many people? <laughs> um, you could say brick came up during this era. Mm hmm. Like that, and that was in that was one of those warehouse shows where where her face started bleeding, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the start of it. Yeah, um, as well as like Sasha and Bailey, how they were able to Sasha Bailey and Drew McIntyre, they were able to like take the mantle when it comes to like the performance center shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How are you, Dave? I would, you know, uh, the fact that. And this is kind of going off of something Tina said about how financially WWE is doing amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's one or two still good storylines. <laughs> like on SmackDown, Roman is amazing. Oh, we, found, yeah, we, yeah. we got the Roman. Oh. We, it, it, without COVID, we don't get Roman. We don't get this Roman. That That is actually, you You bring up a good point. Um, it's they they're able to play with that character without I'm gonna, I'm gonna come off so wrong in saying this without the like without the fans like oh, no no you're not, not saying it wrong no no you're you're not because th that is the, the biggest problem with Roman is the problem they had with John Cena they were fighting the crowd mm -hmm. for decades mm -hmm. decades especially with Cena and Roman they've been fighting the crowd for the last five or six years yeah. They, I mean, literally, I mean, it's like you, you want to scream at this, you want to scream and say, listen to me, you're seen out old man. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to work. Hey, guess what? We have the tribal chief Roman Reigns, and it is literally the best, definitely best thing on WWE by far, by far. And without, without no, without, you know, without, a, if there was crowds there, that wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. It's also the only good thing on SmackDown. And to have someone, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off, Dave, but to have someone like Paul Heyman 
to help fine tune that character too. Yeah. It, 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 it's been great stuff. Yeah. If I can I throw in and uh, possibly uh, respectfully disagree with Dave, um, I've always felt like the John Cena thing, and I'm not going to go too down this because we don't want we want to keep this to an hour and a half or something. The John Cena thing was WWE knew it was pissing you off that John Cena kept winning. I felt it was like an ingenious way to make him to a uh, uh, face to the kiddies, but a heel to the fans. And then, I mean, how many great rivalries did, did he have with other faces that we were like begging, please let CM Punk be him. Please let, you know, whoever else beat him. Even the heels were like, oh, Triple H, please be Cena. Please get him off our TV. I think they knew what they were doing, and I think that they were tr starting to try to do something like that with Roman, and for whatever reason, it wasn't producing the same results. I mean, right after Roman beat Undertaker, he was a face, but he went out there and just said, oh. I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, I'm just the guy. Oh yeah, he well, I mean, when, when he when he came out and, and he got the ten minute or what five or ten minutes worth of straight booze, uh -huh. and just said, "This is my yard now." Yeah, and that was great. And you're like, "Yes," but and no then nothing. Yeah. Now, now was Suffern Succotash before that or after that? I forget. I'll bet you it was after, but i uh -huh. you're right. I mean, we're we run into that today where. Hey, this is great. Here's this great guy, and uh, now we're gonna go over here. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, what, uh, literally, they ha the rest of it's just like banging. There's, like I said, there's two or three things, and but they have so much money right now. Mm -hmm. They just they don't have. There, there's no pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their ratings suck. You know, a recent Raw had 1.5 rating. Uh, yeah. I also want to, I, and I also want to backtrack that a moment on uh, the ratings because I, I want to state. Uh, I know it's different from we, we past, yeah, yeah, we we can say like you know, oh my god, they got a one point five, but also realize, and I I do not know this for a fact, but I know it's true. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Badger. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when oh. WCW went off the air, they were still like one of the top rated cable shows, oh, yeah. but yeah. they they got exited because of management. Right. Um, yes. I, Raw, even at these quote unquote dismal ratings, are still probably fantastic. Oh, compared to the rest, yeah, they're still top ten, top five. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, still, yeah. I'm sure they're still touting trending every Monday, Friday, and pay per view nights, right? Because oh, yeah. they are. Because they are. Everybody's yeah. watching it. Everybody, every that. Well, you yeah, okay? Look, the ratings they're down, so the general audience maybe is leaving, but the talkative audience on Twitter is all, still watching. Right. Right. You yeah. know, we all do because it's what we do. You know. But, <laughs> I was about to say, but you also remember with the programming, besides their own network, their two flagship shows are backed by major, major corporations, NBC Universal and Fox. Yes. Yes. So. Um, and with AEW, the one good thing, I, I think AEW has much better tie in for their network mm -hmm. than WWE has with either of their networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that horrible Shaq business. <laughs> Which I think was supposed to be an NBA tie-in. I love Rick and Morty night. <laughs> uh, no, and they're having fun with it. And there's the Christmas story thing, which would have just happened by the time this releases, right? Um, which I'm sure went fantastic. Oh, it, I'm sure it's hilarious. Yes. Like, actually, it's a thing that would make me tune in because I'm not tuning in for the Christmas story. Just for MJF in a pink bunny suit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just looking for the YouTube. It's like the Super Bowl. I'm looking for the ads on YouTube. But um, yeah, no, exactly. I, I I think they do a lot. They're, it's fun. It's fun yeah. when they do these things, right? Um, and it's not uh, uh, as cringe as when, when Raw was uh, doing the guest host thing. <laughs> so oh. more like hit or miss. They were trying to figure out like who would be the big draw within that, um, mm -hmm. within the demographic, the 1849 demographic that they're always trying to shoot for. 
Um, I'm going to get, get get Bob Barker out there. He'll he'll drive up the ratings. <laughs> Ugh. Well, that that actually works, but um, yeah, I say I, that's the craziest thing is that the one that you you I mean, it's like you said, let's get the seventy. Wait a minute, oh, he's good. Yes. <laughs> what was the? What was it? I don't think we talked about that. I think it's just a thing I read recently. Justin Long was being interviewed, and he was asked about when he was guest host of Raw, and it was like this is for a rom com. It was him and uh, what Charlie Day from Always Sunny, and they're like, we're going in and we're doing this bit. And we shouldn't have been in front of that audience. I don't know why we were there. <laughs> you know? uh, and I, I, went, I went back and watched the trailer after that. I'm like, oh no, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, this is not the right audience for this thing. So, but um, I try to figure out a closer. Uh, but I, I guess I want to give you guys kind of a, a quote first in the in in the can dibs on. And this is actually going to be pretty wild. Usually it's just kind of like what crazy shit is Vince McMahon going to do next year? But um, uh, what are your predictions for wrestling? Because that is really a... it. I don't know how we can predict anything right now. <laughs> it, I can't it, before before we get to that, I want. I was hoping I could throw one more topic out there. Uh, okay. That, that uh, was very much affected wrestling in 2020, and that was the speaking out movement. Yes. And just how many uh, wrestlers and promoters? Uh, I mean, you know, you can make we can make a list of at least ten right now. David uh, Starr, Mike Quackenbush. Um, Not naming other... people I've interviewed, Bradley. <laughs> 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 I, I bought a shirt from David Starr just last year, so you know, we're all we're all thought everything was good. I've, I've stood up and cheered when Mike Quackenbush came out. Like mm -hmm. he was something mm -hmm. special. Oh no, yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of that, of course. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, it's it's you know, and you know what? It's happened right in our own area. Mm -hmm. You know, we we have a uh, couple places that uh, Sorg, you and I have either frequent frequented or at the time or not just recently that now we're just like okay, now who we really realize who these people are. Yeah, yeah. And just, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and of course, you know, uh, th th that's kind of been directly on, uh, on our side here. Um, and maybe not the most publicized, because they're, they're honestly, I think the people that we're, we're speaking with locally are about locally aren't on that. You know, they're not the David Stars. They're not the, the Dave Chris's or anything like that that people know about. Joey Ryan is a big major one as well, too. What's that? Joey Ryan's a big major one oh, as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and, and, and now we're six months later, and you're starting to see some of them kind of resurface again. And that's, you know, like it's like the, I just read, um, <laughs> It, 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 the guy's name was Matt Jackson, so I'm like, why are the young bucks talking about indies right now? But it's not him. It was, it, it's a guy that promotes in our. Uh, I think it's a St. Louis Anarchy owner. I was just reading tonight had a big statement about how like predatory packages, uh, practices, and and safe locker rooms mm -hmm. as part of your job, you know, kind of thing. So like, yeah. I'm happy to see that discussion is still happening. Yeah. Um, and and again, like a lot of the 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 problem people, you know. You know, you still see some of them popping back up on WWE, um, and that's a WWE problem. You know, and, the Indies. and that's actually an interesting point that you bring out about it. And that's just in the U.S. scene. Mm -hmm. Like, when you talk about the U.K. scene and how they're like completely restructuring at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, we the U.K. scene, quite a few of the NXT was it NXT U.K. stars? Yeah, yeah. Or mm -hmm. was like terminated or even. It was I like a, core, a huge chunk of the roster. Mm -hmm. And I mean, w when you have people, it, it's one thing when like, like Velveteen Dream and they said, well, we, we had our own internal investigation. Things didn't blah, 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 blah. And we have them all once in a while. And then Jack Cowher came out and basically said, yeah, I did something I shouldn't have done. They're like, okay, bye. But mm -hmm. I think isn't isn't what the UK scene was. It wasn't there the ones who kind of like got the ball rolling in the first place when it came to speaking out moment. Um, I thought it was one person in the U.S. who got it kind of initially rolling, but U.K. had the bigger impact. Yeah, okay. Just because mm -hmm. of 
how many, because it seemed like it was like, oh, that person and that person and that person and that person. And just because they're, they're so much smaller in the U.S., but the people were like, yeah, and that person and that person and that person. And then he had, the, like you said, with Joey Ryan, just, ugh. But the cool thing about it is, too, um, speaking as a female who's a fan, um, the cool thing that um, something that was so dark brought out to light, you have, um, oh, gosh, I want to say I want to say Vicki Haskins, um, who's um, married, um, who's who's um, a part of the UK scene herself alongside her husband, Mark Haskins. They, um, she's a prominent role now in the restructuring of progress wrestling, where they actually have female leadership that yeah. are going to be in the forefront to try to restructure and rebuild and try to prevent some of those issues. Cause there is a, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it meant words. There is a lot of toxic masculinity, um, but that's with, I'm, I'm going to say that in generalization, that's in, with most um, male dominated industries to begin with. Hmm. Um, Let me mansplain why you're wrong about that. Gina. No, no. <laughs> um, one realization. Why? <laughs> <laughs> one realization that came out from a lot of those kinds of discussions, including like we had some really good discussions even over on the uh, Fight Underground Thursday night live streams with Ronnie Nicole uh, and Badger came on to talk about things. Um, but man, talk. Just find the Ronnie parts. Ronnie Nicole just speaking about uh, uh, whatever the issue of the week was is just like I yeah. want to. Like she needs her own podcast mm -hmm. or something. Uh, she's on. She's on the list to join us on the show here in 2021. I've already been talking to her about it. Okay. Um, and shame on me for not bugging her, to be quite honest. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, I started thinking about like, wow, no, I've never worked for a woman in professional wrestling as as a video production person, right? Like, I can't even think. You know, the closest, the biggest thing is actually RWA. I, I actually want to give props to RWA um, because yeah, feel bad's like the guy, but that entire like support staff are all the girls there. And they actually would call out internally um, when guys that they brought in didn't treat the girls right. That were, you know, doing all the back end stuff really, to be honest. That's um, a tell. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge tell. You know, and and I, I don't know who may have or may not have done anything there, uh, uh, you know, uh, regards to them. But I, I just remember that, it, you know, that is she is he treating you well? Good. OK, then, you know, you know, that that, kind of, that those I, I would I would catch those discussions between between the staff there when we were doing our thing. So, like, that's the only that's the only big one that I'm thinking of, you know, so um. And hopefully it changes. I mean, you figure this is a. I mean, you can't you can't separate the big societal issues from wrestling a hundred percent. But you no, had the combination it's, it's, it's of corona, yeah coronavirus speaking out and Black Lives Matter. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and having someone as prominent as the New Day coming out. And doing as much as they can, mm -hmm. talking about it. Mm -hmm. And it actually, and speaking with the coronavirus, it actually slow, just stopped the world and slowed down and made them pay attention. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, again, not mincing words, representation matters. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. um, like my, I, I, my son, like to see somebody like Ricochet who is, like culturally just like him to and um have kind of like that as kind of what we were speaking before with triple a have that superhero kind of like mentality that is awesome to see mm -hmm. you know um i want to say another one that kind of hit me personally was um trisha dora she oh i forgot the name of the title but she um she won a major title of a um, washington dc promotion actually it's on that it's on that um Thing I sent you yesterday, Sorg, um, and just like highlighting the moments in just like black, rest, um, just like African American wrestling, hence the New Day, ACH, uh, mm -hmm. Lee Moriarty, um, just noting like how the culture is highlighted in such a mm -hmm. turbulent time with Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of these issues were like kegs of dynamite in the coronavirus 
lit the fuse on those things. Yeah, yeah. Well, we 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 got to kind of step back from our own day to day shit. And uh, I mean, we preach so much on the mindfulness podcast about slow down and kind of be aware. And I feel like the world did uh-huh. that. <laughs> and then yeah. we we had we had Twitter and everything. They all kind of look at around each other and be like, "Wait, is this what we think it is? Wait, has this been happening the whole time? Wait, that's what this means? Like, th- I mean, that <laughs> yeah." Which is basically my entire mindset for June. By the way, was what? Huh? That's what that is? Oh shit! You know, like, like, you know, kind of, uh, I don't want to call it an awakening, but it kind of was for a lot of people, probably. It was, it took a global pandemic for every for the world to stop and let people know, hey, this yeah. shit is happening. Hey, like, this, shit, happening. <laughs> this shit is still happening. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, no, absolutely. Well, you're and, not allowed to go out anywhere, so you kind of have to sit there for a while, and then all of a sudden you think about things, and wait a minute, this really is bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, between uh, all of that, or how many people says, "Hey, I can't go back to a nine to five and things like that." You know, it's 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 everything, right? So, but I, 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 you know, I think a lot of good has happened for all the craziness. <laughs> unfortunately, I think a lot of good has happened. I think a lot of evil has been truly uncovered mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we've just kind of like just ignored or. Let ourselves yeah. be gaslit. You know, that the sky's not blue, it's green. You're looking at it wrong, is my favorite quote on that. And isn't um, that what wrestling is to begin with, to fool the marks? And and unfortunately, that's a uh, uh, with great with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so well on that note, I, you know, I think I would do we will we'll do we'll give you guys a round of predictions because Okay. God knows how that Christmas show went last week. Um, <laughs> Come on, it went amazing. We know it went amazing. Did you have a good time? It was wonderful. I mean, it's, I mean, we had Christmas Mike. We did yeah. have that Mike. We did have Christmas Mike. So, and and, and that surprise for the Riz, though, right? That surprise That's for the Riz. Riz. That's yeah. true. That came out of nowhere. That did come out of nowhere. out of nowhere. I don't think anybody was expecting that. <laughs> I don't think either of you know what happened on that show because this was taped before the show. Bradley, we've gotten really good about filming things out of order the last several months. That's what <laughs> directly taught me. Uh, <laughs> um, or at least if we didn't do it right, we covered up really well. Um, but, so, uh, so yeah, what is your prediction? You know, you know hot take, what, where do you think we'll go? What do you think, you know... Uh, uh, presuming another sideways thing doesn't happen to interrupt it as did in this year. Well, I want to put, I want to stake that there, okay? Because I mean, obviously, we couldn't have predicted any of this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, what, 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 what do you think? What, what's your, what's your big wrestling prediction for the year? Whoever is okay, ready. I'll go. It. I'll go. Um... <sighs> Somehow, they are some going way. some way. Vince is going to have not just a few people at WrestleMania in Florida at the end of March. He's going to have, I'm going to say, at least thirty to forty thousand people in that stadium. And I base that partially on when the Steelers played the Cowboys. Now, admittedly, that stadium holds a hundred thousand. They had thirty thousand. Pe- they had 30,000 people in that stadium. In what, 100,000 holding stadium that they've done for yep. WrestleMania uh, in Dallas? Yeah, so, yeah. for yeah. football. And that was where Vince could not get away with... First of all, that was Texas versus Florida. You know, and let, let's look at the state governments here. <laughs> yes. Florida. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A, um, and we also have... Oh, the vaccine's out, so it really isn't that bad. It's just getting better. So let's even, you know, lower down, you know, in a couple months, let's lower down all these unnecessary regulations anyway. So he's going to talk because I remember it was a it was only a couple months ago the governor of Florida was saying because they the Super Bowls in Florida too. <laughs> uh, he was saying how hey. Everything's going to be so great. The Super Bowl will be packed in the in early February, and he, he was saying that back in August, mm-hmm. August September, when everyone was looking. I'm like, no, 
you may have a quarter filled stadium and that's when we were getting near the low point mm -hmm. in August, September, you know, before the fall bump up happened and, you know, who knows for the next month or so what's going to happen, but we're talking Florida. We're talking late March, right? I always get confused for WrestleMania, but you know, but we're talking, he, I'm, I'm, he's going to talk into it and there's going to be enough people willing to say, yeah, I'm going to go to WrestleMania. This is going to be the first. And just remember, we all remember how big of a deal that first SmackDown after 9-11 was. Okay, that to Vince. That, I mean, they, they, they flew that flag for years that they were mm -hmm. the first large-scale event after 9-11. Mm -hmm. And Vince coming out and saying, somehow they'll spin it. Because, like I said, they've had football games, but we were the first exceptionally large scale event that was successful and that wasn't, you know, crippled like the NFL or first and, large scale entertainment thing after COVID. Yeah. And this is going to be months after Wrestle Kingdom's put 30,000 people, 30,000, 20,000, 20,000, I think they're doing in the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, but we're also talking, like I said, Vince's mentality, if it doesn't happen in the U.S., it doesn't happen. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, what about you, Tina? you have any predictions for the new year? Um, Actually, and speaking of the Tokyo Dome, <laughs> um, I just want to, uh, with everything that's gone on with um, bigger companies like AEW actually acknowledging other plat national platforms and wrestling companies, mm. too, I want to see more of that. Um, even as even hinting and growing at New Japan, you know, mm -hmm. obviously with the roots of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and everything. So that would be interesting to see if that's something they can foster. Farnsworth? Something goes wrong in AEW and Vince buys it for a song. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm, saying there, I'm saying there's enough, there are enough skeletons buried amongst the talent that AEW has put together that the wrong thing comes out and Tony Khan's going to drop it like it's hot. Wobble, wobble. I was going to say what skeletons are in Tony Khan's closet. I, I mean, I don't even need to know that. I know enough of the people that, I mean, they've already done some house cleaning. I doubt they've done enough. Mm. I, feel, I feel that, I feel that, I said for a while that AEW, the problem was that the people in charge were used to being the top wrestlers, not how to make the top wrestler. Um, I don't think any of them really understand how to do crisis control right and once that crisis hits whatever it is lowered house is something goes wrong a big whatever whatever grenade has had that pin pulled uh to quote jimmy carr uh comedian i've already told the joke that will end my career i just don't know which one it is someone in AEW has done something that will end up being the bonfire that causes the problem. That you wanted a prediction. There's my prediction. Hmm. Hmm. Far Farnsworth, what what uh, has that? What, what would make that cause the effect for AEW, but not for WWE? W? Are you kidding? Vince Vince had Jimmy Jimmy Snuka killed a woman on the road, and Vince covered it up. Vince knows how to bury a body. Okay. Vince, Tony Khan yeah. oh, yeah. and, and the rest of the AEW hierarchy, I don't think they've ever really had to had yeah. to hide a road piece at 3 a.m. Uh, yeah. least what was left of her. WWE is a corporate mafia in wrestling that's been doing this for 50 years. Uh, they huh. they have experience. Like, like they need to be like... They need a knockout punch. You know, I always said the WWE is the only one that's going to put WWE on the business. Um, and obviously, coronavirus didn't take them down. Uh, so, so like that's, yeah, yeah, that's that's that goes all along with that. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the problem will be. 
But I'm saying something's going to pop up in AEW that they won't understand. They won't understand it fully or know how to deal with it, and that will be the sucker punch that that hurts them to the point where WWE buys them for a song. That's a bit of hyperbole. But. A um a case study for this is what happened with NWA. Um, because during speaking out, in their producer who was. I would say probably the heart and soul of the production, both with NWA and what was happening with uh, Billy Corrigan's even personal career, uh, music career, because I had a conversation with him about such things on our show, uh, uh, was speaking outed. I cannot remember what the issue, what was that issue, but he did something really horrible. Um, and I think a couple members of the town, including Joey Ryan, were involved in that. Was Joey Ryan part of them, I think? Uh, but he was the big one, and you saw NWA just that was done, right? Um, obviously, they're trying to do something now, but it's one of these kind of uh, I'll I'm yeah, I don't have a kind of way of saying it half assed things like what from the California wrestling guy, uh, Hollywood wrestling guy. Um, it's not NWA, yeah, yeah it's it's just they're they're just cutting up their primetime live pay per views. Weekly pay per views and do an episode. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like, wait, Thunder Rose is still a champion. That's not right because I watch AEW every week, and Serena D was just on with the belt again. You know, uh, like those kinds of things. Um, so, not that cool thing they were doing a year ago. Um, yeah. But you know, smaller case, not something that would get bought by Vince. But as far as the teardown, I think that's something to look at. Bradley, what? Wait, what's your prediction? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the prediction things. But this is going to be the best Bradley phone wow. ever. I, after after what that, like you said, after what happened this year and, you, and everything that happened, now you're supposed to sit there and say what's going to happen next year. I like somebody saying, uh, you know, give yourself credit for five years ago when, when then somebody asked you what you think you were doing five years from now, you had no idea what you were going to be doing five we years. We were all ago. wrong. We were all wrong. Every 2020 last one was going to be the year. Um, I feel like, and this might be just safe predictions, but I think events will be back. Um, if not spring, summer or something mm -hmm. like that. I feel like we're going to be pretty close to normal by the time the year is over. Um, that's, you know, that, that's my feeling right now, but uh, there might be already evidence that says these vaccines are going to take nine months to get to everybody or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's my feeling is that, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be gradual. It's not going to be like, okay, here's the click and here's everybody go ahead and we're all hugging each other again. Um, but it'll be gradual, but I think by the end of next year, we'll be back to events. We'll be back to, you know, having our independent shows and mm -hmm. uh, governments that say, you're okay now. It's all right. Um, um, I'm with that. And, uh, and I've been saying for a while, um, when it comes to these things, there will not be a day where everybody throws their doors open and everything's fine. And right. even when we go back to the shows, your shows will not be the same. They will not be the same. Well, it's going to take a while for it to be the same. I mean, we're, I mean, yeah. all of a sudden, all the heat, all the popularity, I'd say like 90% of it dies. No, I not not for that, but I think there's a lot of lessons learned from way to do things during the pandemic that will inform. Um, I, think, I think you will still see masks in the crowd. I think that, that will, um, much like uh, Asian cultures have had masks, Everywhere, you oh, know. Yeah, I think uh, the, like that's twenty twenty one will come and go, and I think you'll still see some people with masks, even yeah, if you got I, and... I think there will there will be behavior, hand sanitizer, and wiping down the wing, ring ropes will still be a consistent thing that happens as well, a rule. Well, hopefully, as well, we'll bring a little bit more etiquette and as far as how to treat people at shows and the respect of personal space too. I don't know. I'm, yes. I, I deal with well, maybe space. not shove your entire roster in the back of the, the, you know, of a deli. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
my um, personal bubble is my personal bubble. I you cannot be all up on yeah. my face or all up mm -hmm. on my back. I'm sorry. Maybe That's maybe it. when you walk into that venue and you see the board on the walls, you're like, this ain't right. I'm out or I'm not coming back here. You know that kind of stuff. Like it's like I don't know. I don't know. Or, or that one place that Lee Moriarty said was a trap house. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I love the look at Dave's face on that one. <laughs> There's so, so many terms for trap house that I could think of, but I don't want to go into. No, no, no. <laughs> Guys, also, thank you so much. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. One, one, one long-term prediction. In 20 to 25 years, we are going to have the greatest generation of second and third generation wrestlers out there. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because everyone having the babies. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. When wrestlers okay. don't go on the road, they all have the babies. <laughs> Are you ready for the feud between hardcore Moxley baby and and what fourth generation Rhodes baby? I. I... <laughs> Uh, you know, do I need to point out all of the children of wrestlers that were absolutely terrible? <laughs> the best, every, best yeah, every one great Charles one that's Leonard part Jr. of a legacy. I mean, <laughs> I, there, there's, you know, there's a lot. I'm just saying, all of these babies that pro wrestlers are having, they're not all going to be. They're not all going to be. Oh you know, no! What you want to watch? Or, oh no! I mean, who predicted? Who I hate to put it this way, but who predicted fifteen years ago the most famous flair would have been Ashley? Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Wow. I would say the most. Wow. Thank you guys. Currently working. But, but, yeah. Well, right. I mean, of that generation, of the generation, yeah, yeah. of Rick's kids. Um, <laughs> I predict that there will be a new project that will be out in the first weeks of January uh, and a new news source, hopefully for uh, everybody out there. Uh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll soft announce it here uh, as your as the special thing for everybody listening. Uh, so Matt Carlins and I have been working on a project, uh, Just Pro Wrestling News. It's going to be your under five minute news source. Uh, most mornings, I'm not going to say which mornings yet. That's still being sussed out as we're recording this. Um, but uh, that's something exciting. We're gonna it's gonna be a new podcast project. If you guys are on Patreon, of course, you've been receiving that already. Uh, as we've been kind of beta testing uh, the process, I guess we could say. And uh, don't worry, Matt's got a new mic coming, <laughs> so it's gonna sound much better. Uh, so sounds fine. Sounds fine. <laughs> uh, but oh, oh, he should, he's like uh, hearing the process, and he's trying, basically basically car. Carlin's mainstream studio is in process right now in the wow. Carlin household and it's fantastic. I can't wait for this launch. He's going to talk. I'm sure he's going to talk about on the show about uh, going under the stairs and in this hobbit hole and uh, doing the show. Um, but uh, I'm excited to get that out for everybody. I, I think it's something that, that, you know, beyond mayhem may uh, uh, have a, a, a pretty good interest in, uh, in the new year. So um, that should be fun. Uh, so, uh, anybody have anything they want to plug on the way out? Any, any New Year's projects? Anybody? I I just want to state that the best part of 2020 amongst all this crap and terribleness was the fact that uh, Dutters beat the hell out of cancer. Yes, he did. Yes. yes, she did. Talk yes. about stepping up and kicking ass. I, Dutters is a is a role model to us all. Uh, yeah. uh, Dut and Dutter butt enthusiast. And butt enthusiast. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Bradley. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I think she inspired all of us to get through COVID. <laughs> so, um, no, that was fantastic. And to watch that journey. And, and if everything. she can get through cancer during COVID, then I can clearly survive sitting on my couch eating crap. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting there, you're all depressed, and you're sitting there saying, I can't go out anywhere. This is just so horrible. Let me look at Facebook. Let others... Oh, geez. <laughs> all right, we got two managers here. Before we go, do you have any proclamations for the show? I know Bradley's been throwing his weight around a little bit, and we've been doing our best to do the No Butts uh, uh, ban uh, over the last month. Uh, do you have any, any proclamations of what you would like to see on the show? Um, and uh, I'll go with the managers first, but but everybody has a Patreon gets to get a, give a shout out. 
Well, I guess the senior manager has to go first. So go ahead, Farnsworth. I'd just like to see more butts and less Bradley. So. No! His, 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 his pro butts is counteracting my con butts. <laughs> Man. <laughs> There you go, Dave. Oh, I saw a cat butt. Oh, I looked away and there was a cat butt. Man. I have no idea if that's recording on video the way we're doing this, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is going to look I like. I looked away and I looked back and I saw a little cat butt in the corner there. I was like, oh, no, there it was right there, man. What are you, Bradley? Um, no, I just keep going. I mean, I, I, uh, this is something I watch every the wrestling main show, um, show is something I watch usually during work, uh, every week. You know, I, uh, today I was work walking, uh, working and got through, uh, Honey Badger, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then just what, just I enjoy having that in the background and everything. And, and I enjoy everyone saying hi. You know, we, we have our little fun and everything, and that, that's fun. You know, for everybody to say, hey, Brad, here's a button. I'm like, hey, that makes me angry. Here's an angry face. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun. I And, I, and uh, I'm very happy, and I'm sure Farnsworth is very happy to support the show. As well as everyone else that's on here. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say anything bad about them. Their, their support. We're all trying to support Sorg. We, we like what he does. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um... Not so much the show, but Sorg himself. We just need to the show them. is meh. I'm okay. Okay. Or I'm mad, but the show picks. I don't know. Dave, any proclamations for uh, 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 the show that you, you want to see out of us in 2021? Yeah. You know, and I, and, and I know I mentioned it in chat about me getting on AEW a little bit for the, oh, look, it's 9 30 time for the women's match. <laughs> Dude, I looked out but, of my clock in the moment when the women came out at 9 28. I was like, damn you, Dave. Now I notice. <laughs> And admittedly, I stole that from someone else, but it was like, wait a minute, does that? That's true. They have the, but honestly, the one thing I like about the show is that outside of the good natured ribbing, and and I and Bradley, like I said, if you actually were ever upset, I would stop. You know, <laughs> I, I, seriously. But it is somewhere where it's there is fun, and there's so much that can be negative with wrestling fans oh, out there. God, yes. It is, I mean, that's fans of anything, but, you know, it, it's good-natured fun, and if you can't have fun when you're watching wrestling, don't watch wrestling. And I think that's all we're trying to do here, just have fun as a group. Mm -hmm. And as much mm -hmm. as people complain about the internet and, you know, back in my day, we talked to people who lived across the street. You didn't, well, you know what? Sometimes people cross the street to have nothing in common with you. You know what? My people cross the street, I don't think they watch wrestling. They may not. It's shocking. I want to put a sign <laughs> around my house and, and just ask, do you watch wrestling? And maybe I'll find out. So I asked my neighbor about the Montreal screw job, but they just stared at me like idiots. <laughs> But hmm. you know, just like I said, it, 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 just how positive, you know, we're, we try to be as a group. Um, and, and also just that we're happy that Misty's home. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully there's no long, there, there won't be any uh, long, you know, everyone will, we, we can actually start seeing her families and everyone else again soon. And just, you know, be friendly and kind to each other because there's enough assholes out there. <laughs> Tina, you have any mayhem proclamations for 2021? Um, I'm actually going to talk positive about the professor for once. Ooh. <laughs> Although I do have questions about the syllabus. I'm sure everything yeah. went great. I'm sure everything went great last week. Yeah, I'm sure everything went great last week. Um, he's a real professor, I, by the way. He's a real professor. That's debatable. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just just the possibility of like expanding. I think that's what 2020 has taught us to expand our wrestling palettes of what's available, mm -hmm. of what all that's out there, at least what we consume in little bits. Um, there was recommendations I um, that was made with the professors, the homework assignments, and there's others that we have had conversations about, um, about like what to watch and what to check out. And I want to see more of that. I want to see include inclusion and diversity, just expanding your wrestling, expanding your wrestling palette who 
what's out there, I should say, and keep that and keep an open mind. You should see my not damn. All us, not all of us can be. Not all of us can be in that little like um, southern territories, closed-minded mm-hmm. wrestling level. I'm talking about <laughs> a bigger podcaster. I'm <laughs> just saying. You, you 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 should see my watch list for wrestling right now. <laughs> what I'm trying to get into <laughs> between Impact coming in the fold, Honor Club, and and I like I started watching MLW tonight. <laughs> oh, ML- oh, there's a teaser. Oh boy. I saw. Oh boy. I watched the first like like 10 minutes and there's a new Laparka and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm watching this. Uh so yeah, that'll be happening. Um thank you guys so much. And, and seriously, thank you so much. Uh I mean one of the big things is is that there's people that are on Patreon and believe enough to do to be on Patreon uh uh for this show and in the awesome cast. And that's, you know, uh, on the bad days, yes, we all have bad days. And it's just like, should I keep doing this thing? Does anybody care? I, I That's, you know, between the Patreon and the group and you guys, Tuesday nights and Monday nights and sometimes a random Thursday night on in the chat room. Um, like that, that, you know, that's what keeps the show going for sure. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for doing this. And thank you guys for doing the show tonight. On a random Wednesday night where it's fucking snowing out, except for Tina. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, every, thank you, everybody. Um, again, keep an eye out, look out for. Oh, it should work by now. Just pro wrestling news dot com. If you can subscribe to that new project, we will be back in the first week of January. I think we're only taking one week off now. That I think about it. Uh, I need to look at a calendar. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, and uh, we're going to keep going in 2021. Uh, until next time, Mayhem out. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.